Thank you for coming to the Julia Smith Art Show for 2021. And if you would be so kind as to hit the subscribe and like buttons below, that would also be greatly appreciated. So this is a picture of me, and I was in Tel Aviv at the time. And I think that is a Banksy graffiti on the wall behind me. I'm not 100% sure about that. But the picture below is a picture of my mother's. And my mother was a painter, and she just did really, really gorgeous things. And her work is in many private collections in the Midwest. And so I grew up drawing, painting, sewing, doing all these things. And by the time I was in high school, I started designing clothing for friends of mine. And so later on in my late 20s, I started a fashion design business. And at the same time, kind of serendipitously, I started a catering business. So it was all about art and it was all about design. Later on, I had the opportunity to start designing other things, and that included this little tiny home, which is out in the desert east of Los Angeles. But it's always been something that I've done my entire life. Now, while I was doing fashion design, two things emerged. One of them was that I love bold colors and also cities, and that I also love nature. And those two themes just kind of kept popping up into everything to this day. And so at some point, I realized that I, my business was either hot or cold. So I either had too much business or not enough. And at that time, I decided that what I would do is get a job with benefits. Well, if you have a job with benefits, you have to go to meetings. So I would go to these meetings and I would flip over the paper agenda and I would start sketching on the back of it. Later on, I would look back at the sketch that I had made and I realized that what I was really doing was I was doing social commentary about the meeting and the people in the meeting. And you can see in this picture, there are some boxes on top of others and others that are really open and some that are closed down and that sort of thing. And so, but it was an accurate depiction of what had gone on in the meeting. And so I kept doing boxes. Now this, particular work I actually did during the pandemic during the lockdown and it's entitled fearful boxes because you know we associate yellow as being the color of fear sometimes yes but in any case you know people are very very fearful and, and really many people still are to this day about the pandemic so I was just trying to express my feelings about that this is actually a framed piece it's actually a drawing and this has glass on it, so that's why there's a little bit of a reflection, but still social commentary. So pretty soon, the buildings showed up, like the boxes started morphing into buildings. And then what I found myself doing was I found myself sketching, and I started sketching these big works. So as you can see, I started with a building sketch. And then what I would do is I would go back and I would paint it with acrylic paints and then put in details with Sharpies and gel pens and you name it, other like writing utensils. So it was really fun. This is called the big city and it's on, it, it's big. It's like almost five feet wide by three feet tall. So one of the other things that I started doing was I started incorporating different textures of paints. And if you go to the paint department anywhere, and you look at all the swatches and they have matte and satin and eggshell paints and, and enamels and all these others. And I started adding pearlescent and metallic paints in there and sometimes other different kinds of paints, even fingernail polish sometimes. And so there's a depth and what you can't see and maybe in this particular picture is that there is real like play with the light. So here's an example of a painting that I was doing and I started by sketching it and then adding the details and then going back and putting in all the details. So again, it's very, very dynamic. If you walk from one side to the other, it really plays with the light. And so it's just really a fun thing to have, like I think in your living room maybe. Maybe you need to have one of those. So this is a drawing on paper. And if you'll notice, on the tops of all these buildings, there are all these little structures. And, you know, if we look at a big city, you know, there's the stuff that goes on in the buildings, 
and outside the buildings and on top of the buildings. And of course there's the wind coming through. It's very dynamic and it's very complex. And that's one of the things I love about big cities. But as the pandemic wound on and on, it's still kind of going on and on, isn't it? And so what I found was that it was so therapeutic to just like kind of express all these feelings and, but you have to kind of interpret these. Now, one of the things that is a hallmark of my artwork is if you look, there are the tiny two. If you look just above the yellow and the red where they come together and you'll see these tiny two figures and they are pretty much in all my artwork, but you'll have to look for them because they're kind of difficult to find, but they're there and they lend this, I don't know what to call it exactly. It's like when you look at art, you have to kind of examine your own feelings, especially if it's not something that's really explicit. Like if you're looking at a scene of mountains and the water in a stream or something, you know what that is. But if you're looking at more abstract art, you have to interpret it a little bit. And so what are these two little figures doing and why are they there? And so we, when we look at it, we pull the emotions, our own emotions, out of our own self to look at things. So in any case, these are just some of the, if you will, social commentary going on. This one's called Opposites Attract. Now at some point, I decided to transition off of doing like abstract things and go to a little bit more nature-focused things. And so this was all pretty much during 2020 and 2021. And so I actually have a cousin who collects art and he suggested that I do some floral things. And I was like, no, 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 I, I, I don't, I do boxes, you know, but I started doing floral things and especially leaves. And there is something so wonderful about leaves. You know, they take in our carbon dioxide and they provide us with oxygen. They are colorful. They're in all different sizes and shapes. And some of them have little tiny hairs on them. Some of them are shiny and slick and, you know, like the buildings, there are layers and layers of details with leaves. So I just love doing leaves. And so these are paintings. And again, they're sketched and then painted. And then the details are added in with Sharpies and gel pens and whatever. So really, really fun and just they bring life into pretty much any living room or any space that they're in. And so the same thing is true with the ocean, isn't it? If you look at the surface of the water and it just looks like water, right? You go, well, the ocean is really big. But what you don't see is underneath the surface of the water, there are just layers and layers and layers of life. So one of the things that I started doing this summer is I started taking the artwork and I started putting it on objects. And so, you know, sometimes people don't want to have a big, you know, painting with a bunch of fish on it in the middle of their living room, but they'll put it on their backpack or on a coffee mug. And those make really nice gifts for people. So sometimes, you know, we don't know people's artistic tastes, but they can have a little bit of fun with a coffee mug or a phone cover or something like that. So not all, but many of my pieces of art have been posted to redbubble.com slash J-L-N-N-S-M-T-H and you can download from their prints or the prints can be on metal or they can be on magnets or whatever. So it's just really a fun place if you're looking for gift ideas for the holidays. So again, it's Julia Smith Art Online. That's what my banner looks like. And one more thing. Like I don't do catering anymore for like weddings or that sort of thing, but I do do gourmet cakes and like for other special occasions. And one of the things I specialize in is making them sugar free. So those are available only in Southern California. So if you are in the Los Angeles or the desert areas or maybe even San Diego, shoot me an old fashioned email and you can inquire about those there. So if you're interested in possibly purchasing one of the originals, those are for sale on Etsy.com slash Julia Smith Art Online. And you can also go there and you can download digital prints of these things too.
So thank you so much. And you can check out my website. Thank you for watching.